Alright, so if you still have beef with me after watching this explanation, I would recommend just closing the browser and stop listening to me if I'm so disgusting to you. Hi! <laughs> Chloe here. Welcome to my channel. I like to go by Sea Shoddy Hill. You can call me Sea Shoddy. Um, welcome back. So today, I just felt compelled to make a video in response to my first video that I made about my best town copper. So first, before I get started, I just want to say thank you so much to everyone who watched my video about Basset Hounds and thank you to everyone who left nice comments. It made me so happy when people like commented, I have a Basset and you were so spot on, my Basset does the same exact thing or you could identify with at least a couple of the Basset Hound traits that we discussed. Come here, Cop. Come here. Um, but something else I did notice in the comment section of that video is some of you really thought like I was being mean to my like mean to my dog and some of you said that I don't deserve a basset some of you even said I don't deserve to have a rat as a pet and I discussed them yeah people said that but I don't know I really don't know if like they just didn't watch the whole video and they just like, looked at the title and was like oh forget this girl she doesn't like her basset. And honestly, like the purpose of the video wasn't even to convince people not to get one. I think basset hounds are great. I would recommend one. Well, let's back up. Just because I was talking about some of the more difficult parts of being a basset hound owner, and just because I was being honest and open about some of the trials we went through to get to where we are today, which is very happy. Um, that doesn't mean that I don't love and appreciate my dog. Like anyone who knows me in real life knows that like this dog, and that one too, but I've only had him for almost a year now. I've had Copper since I was 19 years old. I think anyone who knows me in real life knows how big of a part, um, how big of a role Copper plays in my life, how every single decision that I make and every single day I am putting Copper first before most of my own needs or wants. And I mean, he's really been enjoying me not being able to leave the house very much. All the pets are really enjoying it. Are your pets enjoying it or are they like weirded out that you're home all the time now? And yes, the title of the video was 10 Reasons Why You Do Not Want a Basset Hound. But they, they aren't reasons why you shouldn't get one. I just think people need to know what they're getting themselves into before they make the decision to bring a dog in general into their lives. I mean, it's a huge responsibility. And especially since I was in college when I got Copper, I saw a lot of people get puppies and then be like, oh my gosh, I can't afford this, or I don't have the time for this, or I don't, I'm not responsible enough for this. And I wasn't, I wanted to talk a little bit more about the situation I was in that, that led me to obtaining this my beautiful son. And just more of like the rationale behind the video because it really pissed some of you off. And the last thing, I, you know, I know like it's the internet and people, not everyone's gonna like me and I can accept that. But I, I was not expecting that video to get that many views. All my other videos have like around 100 views. And for my best son video to now have over 12,000, that was unexpected. And I just felt like I needed to clarify <laughs> because I love my dog. I can't imagine life without my dog. I would do anything for my dog. So, all right. So when I got Copper, I don't remember how much I went into detail. If you haven't seen the first video that was so controversial, I'll put a link in the description of this one. Anyway, um, yeah, I was in a situation. I was in college. I was a sophomore in college and we had this amazing dog named Goldie. And my family and I got Goldie when I, I believe I was in the second grade. And she was a golden retriever and she was 
so sweet and she was just like the best dog ever and as i grew older goldie and i developed this really special relationship and it was always me and goldie i would take her everywhere with me she always wanted to get in the car with me it was just always me and her so when i went away to college it was obviously very difficult and i stayed in a dorm my freshman year and then i was so excited the following year so i could move out and get a, an apartment where i could bring goldie with me and I went to, to school in the same state that I lived in, that my family lives in, but it was about a seven hour drive from where we were. So it was a big move. And my mom, you know, was sad to let Goldie go with me, but she felt better about me living on my own. I didn't have any roommates. I wanted to live in a one bedroom apartment by myself and with my dog. And my mom knew that I was taking Goldie. So the summer before I took her, she got a new golden retriever who we still have today. His name is Chance. And I got to take Goldie to college with me. Now, right before we were leaving to go to college, um, Goldie started having a lot of health problems and it was just really disappointing and, and hard to deal with because I'm like, okay, I'm moving out of the dorm. I don't have all the support. I don't. I'm not, it's like basically when you live in a dorm, it's kind of like an extended summer camp. And then you have these RAs, which are like your camp counselors. And they put all these stupid posters on the wall and they like bug the shit out of you. I don't know. It really pissed me off to have someone try and like controlling aspects of my life. But at the same time, there was a lot of support. I was like with a bunch of people my own age everywhere and everyone was, you know, always together. So I was really comforted to know that I would have my childhood dog, my best friend, with me. And she started having these health problems. Um, we took her to the vet and I mean, she was at that point maybe 10 or 11 years old. And um, she started having problems walking. She had problems like pooping and she stopped eating and she couldn't get up from a laying down position. It was obvious that she was in a lot of pain. And if I remember correctly, this happened like the weeks leading up to us getting ready to go back to school for the fall. And um, the vet was able to give her, I think they gave her a, one of those shots, what was it? Like a steroid shot. And they put her on steroids and I was able to take her. But it was a lot harder than I anticipated because she couldn't really walk. I would have to like carry her back legs. And she was not like a small dog. She was a big dog. Um, she would have a lot of accidents as the months went on. And she started getting like even more attached to me than before. Like she would get really upset when I left. And obviously I knew I was gonna bring my dog. So I made my schedule that I would have enough breaks during the day to come home and take care of her. I had to cook for her. She couldn't eat regular dog food anymore. So I had to make rice and chicken for her every single day. And um, I enjoyed taking care of her. As you might know, I did work in hospice. I enjoy being there for people, animals, when you know it's at the end of their life. And I think those are some of the most precious moments. And I felt like it was an honor that I could be there. But as her condition started to get worse, we drove home for, what are you eating? <laughs> no. We drove home for winter break. And, you know, we got home and I was like, look, you know, I think it's time. I think that she doesn't really have a quality of life. It's the shots worn off. She can't walk anymore. She, I would have to take her to the vet like once a week to get enemas because she couldn't have bowel movements. And the vet was like, you know, out of all dogs, this is the dog that, that can handle getting enemas every week, but like, just consider like, this is not a good quality of life and this is not by any means fun or good for your dog. So the vet, you know, we were having these conversations and kind of trying to prepare for what was inevitable, essentially. And I remember I came home and I was with my mom and my brother. I'm like, look, we're here all together. I think it's time. Like, I think that now is the time. So the three of us take Goldie to the vet and we're ready to make this big, awful decision. And then my mom backs out. She's like, I can't do it. It's not happening today. Give her another, I think it might've been a cortisone shot. Give her another cortisone shot. Let's buy her a couple more weeks. So they did. And she was able to walk again for much less than she did the first time. Much less, um, less long, not as long as it worked for the first time, but it still worked. 
So it came time to go back to school and I decided I would still take her with me. Now at the time I was dating a frat boy. <laughs> I don't really want to get into it because it was not a good relationship, but I will say that he was able to help me with Goldie because he always skipped classes and he mooched off me and stayed in my apartment every single day. But he actually didn't really help me. He would just call me when something went wrong and I would have to rush home and deal with it. So eventually the shot wore off again and I ended up having to, to take Goldie to get her put down by myself with this guy in Tallahassee. And um, I mean, if I think about it to this day, even though it happened like five years ago, if I still think about it, it will really upset me. It's probably one of the most traumatic, the most traumatic thing I've ever witnessed. Of course, I stayed in the room with her. I didn't let them take her back and I, it was really bad. And it was very difficult for me to get over. So I remember like coming back home and not having her there anymore, like sitting on the couch and she would lay like right at my feet and not, she wasn't there anymore. And I was so, so, I would like sunk into this really bad depression. And um, so I started thinking after a couple weeks, like I think I want another dog. Like I set my schedule up to take care of Goldie. I think I'll be able to, to take on another animal. And I just, I need a dog in my life. I need to fill that, that void, honestly. And um, I did have Luna at the time. I got my cat, Luna. I got her um, between the time that I had Goldie in school with me. So I, Luna knew Goldie, which is pretty cool. Um, but she was still a kitten when Goldie passed away. And I really thought that I wanted to adopt an older dog because I enjoyed being there for Goldie at the end of her life. I wanted to rescue a dog. And I told this to some of my close friends and they all knew how much Goldie's death affected me. And they actually convinced me otherwise. They were, they just basically said, Chloe, I don't see you being able to handle this happening again anytime soon. They didn't want me to adopt an older dog and then have to go through this again, basically. So they were like, just get a puppy. You can handle a puppy, get a puppy, get a puppy. And I was like, I don't know, it took some convincing, but I ended up deciding, okay, I'll take on a puppy. This guy that I'm dating supposedly will help me. He did not help me, but it was an illusion that I had in my mind. He said he would help me. And I was young and naive, so he said he'd help. <laughs> So, it, you know, I had to like find a puppy, figure out what kind of dog I wanted. And then he said like, why don't you get a basset hound? And I was like, a basset hound? That is the most ridiculous thing ever. And I remember growing up the shoe brand Hush Puppies. And like, I always thought they were really cool dogs, but like I had never really, I don't think I'd ever really met one in real life. They're not, like I said in the other video, they're not very common dogs. But I started doing research and I was like, yeah, this might be a good fit actually. And I also knew that I did not want to replace Goldie. I wanted a different a different type of dog, but I wanted a big dog. So, <laughs> but I lived in a small apartment. So I didn't want to get a dog that had like crazy amounts of energy or that would be miserable living in a, in a one bedroom apartment with me while I was in school. So uh, I found Copper on Craigslist. He was a puppy. I think he was like 10 weeks old when I got him and I, I found him on Craigslist. I paid $400 for him. Um, I don't, he came from this farm. I don't know. I don't know if it was a puppy mill. I really don't know. And I don't want to be judged for that. So if this video also makes you sick because I got my dog from Craigslist, I'm sorry. I love him. He's happy with me. We're good together back off so yeah i got this little cute little basset puppy and i thought i was prepared but it had been a long time since i had a puppy in my life there were just a lot of things that i wish that i have learned not that i wish that i had known but just things that i found out and things that i wanted to share my experience with my basset hound to let you know if you choose to get a bath sound, some things that you might, that we might commonly experience together. And from the vast majority of comments of people who did have bassets and said that they had a similar experience or they noticed similar things with their basset hounds, that confirms to me that I'm not crazy. And 
I was, I really want you guys to know, like, I was joking. I was joking about, like, not getting a Basset. The last reason, if you watch the video all the way through, the last tenth reason why you don't want a Basset is because you will love them too much. And that is 100% true. I can't imagine life without Copper. He's been with me since I was, I mean, a literal child. Like, you're 19, you're not grown. So I was with, he was with me through that terrible relationship. He was there for me through that breakup. He was there for me for my next two relationships. He was there for me when I graduated college. He was there when I did my internship. He was there for my first job. He was there for three different moves. And he's just been my rock, you know, my companion through everything. And he really helped me get over the death of Goldie. I don't really know if I've talked about everything that I wanted to talk about, but I did definitely want to reiterate how appreciative I am for everyone watching my video and for those of you who subscribe, thank you. I'd love for you to subscribe if you haven't. I would tell you what my channel's about, but I don't really know yet. I'm still pretty new at this. Um, Gopper has a really good life. I take really good care of him. He has this huge backyard where he gets to be outside all the time. We go for walks. He sleeps in bed with me every single night. He cuddles on top of me, flops on me all the time. He has his little friend, Ollie. They love each other. And he has a good life. So please don't think that I'm like, oh, I freaking hate my dog. No, I don't hate my dog. I don't even dislike my dog. You can love someone and still recognize there are annoying traits within them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? All right, so if you still have beef with me after watching this explanation, I would recommend just closing the browser and stop listening to me if I'm so disgusting to you. Um, thank you to everyone for watching. I hope that you all are safe and healthy and um, you make good decisions for yourself. And what have you guys been up to? I've been working out a lot, almost every day. It seems to help. I still work once or twice a week for three hours a day at the Kava Bar. We're just doing takeout and delivery. Hopefully we'll be able to extend our hours soon. Yeah, let me know what's up. Let me know how you are. I love reading the comments. Don't be mean. It's just not worth it. All right, say bye. Say bye. He says bye, okay? Bye. Oh. Thanks for watching.